Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. My name is Frank, and today we're going to be talking about the new Anchor Make M5C. This is Anchor Make's new attempt at making a more user friendly 3D printer, so let's just get right into it. So AnchorMake is a relatively newcomer to the 3D printing space, but they've been in the tech industry for quite a while. Their parent company, Anchor, um, I'm most familiar with them, making USB battery packs and charging banks for your phone. So they've taken a stab at 3D printing, which honestly, kind of a left turn, but I'm here for it. Now, some of you might already be familiar with their original attempt into the 3D printing space, the Anchor Make M5. This is a more stripped down version and the price reflects that. Where the original M5 is $699, the M5C is $399. And let me tell you, once you get it out of the box and build it, it's actually really easy to put together. This is one of the simpler 3D printers I've built, and trust me, I have built a lot, and they lay out the instructions beautifully. It's really, really quick and easy to assemble, and there really isn't much to go over there. It just kind of builds. Don't actually let a 10-year-old do this by themselves. Parental supervision is always recommended when dealing with electronics and hot stuff, but this is so easy to build, I, I feel like a 10-year-old could do it. And as far as build quality goes on the printer, this is probably one of the nicest assembled printers I've ever used. Now, I'm not talking about any print quality or ease of use yet, I'm talking about the actual rigidity of the printer, the build quality, the construction. It's very, very well put together. I have nothing bad to say about that. It goes together quick and it is just a solid machine. But before ever turning it on, I immediately noticed one thing that I really wasn't sure how it was going to play out because I've never had a printer like this. It has no screen. Everything you're gonna to wanna to do on this printer is either controlled from the app or your computer, and you can only do certain things on the app, and you can only do certain things on the computer. So it was kind of a weird choice for them to get rid of the screen because even preheating it, you need to have access to one of these things, but we're gonna talk about that much later once we get into the actual quality and printing and ease of use. Instead of the screen, they've gone and substituted it for this one press button. It is a fully customizable button. If you long press it, if you short press it, if you double press it, it can do different things like level the printer or resend a print. It is a pretty interesting feature and we're gonna see how that plays out through the video. Now the M5C, just like its bigger brother, boasts high speed printing, 500 millimeters a second. Now that isn't going to be an overall general, every single thing you print can be printed at 500 millimeters a second. There's gonna be some give and take on the uh, complexity of the model, the height, the size, and just the quality you want. The faster you print, usually the quality is gonna start to drop, but that's just in the 3D printing space in general. So don't let that number just entice you immediately into this thing. That is more of a roundabout number saying, hey, this is what the printer can do up to if the circumstances are right. This printer is a little bit smaller than its bigger brother. This is a 220 by 220 by 250 millimeter build plate. It can do fairly large stuff like these masks from its uh, little model library. They both came out really, really well. Um, it is, I mean, it's a pretty, that's a pretty good size print for your first 3D printer, especially if it is user friendly as it claims. So you've bought, unboxed, and built the thing. Now it's time to start printing. All you have to do is turn it on and make sure you've downloaded the app or the slicer program. We're gonna talk about the app first because this is actually one of my favorite parts about this whole printer. And once you hook it up to Wi-Fi and bind it and all that fun stuff, which it takes you through all the steps right when you download the app, it's super easy to do. Um, this is actually the best 3D printing app I've ever used on a phone. The user interface is perfectly laid out. If you wanna switch between your printers, it makes it super easy. The printer's idle, here are the temperatures, here I wanna extrude or retract filament, I want to address the offset. I want to auto home stuff. I want to make all these little adjustments and maintenance. It gives you messages and updates if it has to go through an update. It is just very simply laid out. It doesn't have any little extra things that would just get confusing. Now the slicing program on the computer is pretty much similarly laid out. It's very simple, very user friendly. One of the better, easier ones that I've seen. The only difference is I can't figure out a way to get to the model library on the computer. If you're on the app, you can actually go to an explore page and I love this and I'm actually realizing that I just cracked my phone screen. Oh well, we'll live. This has preloaded 3D models that you can just print. This is why I love the app more than anything. Now, obviously some of these models are kind of toys or organization things. You can see that there's a lot of stuff here that I've just printed, dragons and little chains and a little coffin and masks, but there's no guesswork. You don't have to slice anything. You don't have to adjust anything. If you or your kid or whoever is just looking at these models, oh, that's a really cool pumpkin thingamajiggy. I can go and immediately just send that to the printer once I have filament on it. That, that's it. I didn't need to go to my computer or anything. I didn't need to slice anything, drag models, or figure anything out. This is amazing for beginners because at least you can start printing stuff immediately without having to deal with the slicing program. 
And they are constantly adding models. Initially, when I had gotten the uh, M5, there really weren't many models on the library, but since coming out and since getting the M5C, there are way more models. There are uh, seasonal ones and people are constantly uploading them every day. So this is probably one of my favorite parts of the entire system. However, I'm not a big fan that you need this. You need a smartphone. What if your phone's dead? What if you don't have access to it? What if your internet goes down? You won't be able to communicate with the printer because there's no screen. I, I'm not the biggest fan of that and I'm gonna harp on that a little bit. I think other things could have been removed from the printer and other corners cut when trying to get it down to a more user-friendly, cheaper version. And I don't think ditching the screen probably was the best bet. Um, it's just easier to have the whole system there, in my opinion. Here's the printer, here's what you can do. You can preheat it, turn it on, do everything, and not be required to use the app. Something like a mobile app should be an add-on to a printer, not a necessity. But to be my own devil's advocate, it is the future and pretty much everybody has a smartphone, so that's not really an outlandish request to make. It's just kind of an odd choice, I think. Hey guys, editing Frank here, I edit the video. While in the process of editing this one, Anchor Make actually wanted me to add a clip to the video saying, and I quote, that I heard that Anchor Make's M5C 3D printer is going to have a monitor on the machine later. Just a monitor, it isn't a touch screen. That's what they said. So I guess you can view what's going on with the printer on the machine, but I don't know if it's gonna have buttons so you can control it or if it's literally just a monitor, so. Uh, take that with a grain of salt. That means that's something else you need to buy. And if it just doesn't give you any control over the printer after that, I don't really see the pro of that, but some people could be into that. Um, I will definitely be interested to see what that is because I will add it to my printer eventually when I get it. Um, but yeah, just wanted to insert that here. Back to the, the video. As for the slicing software on the computer, and if you're not familiar with what a slicing program is, it is what you use to drag in your 3D models, slice them for the printer, and send them. And if you have your computer hooked up to your network, and your printer will have to be hooked up anyway, you can then send the model remotely from your printer to the printer. So it could be in your garage on your Wi-Fi, it can be in a completely different room, you'll be able to send it, and it works great. They did a good job at laying it out for beginners and there are definitely more advanced options you can go through in the program, but as you gain experience, you'll be able to go through and you know play with those more. However, I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you guys. The first couple times I tried to slice my own model, the program just wasn't having it. I had quite a few weird failures. It was either between bed adhesion, not enough support. It really didn't detect the overhangs the proper way. Now, again, this can be complete user error, me being impatient, me not reviewing the model properly, but I did have some failures initially that definitely would have put me off from slicing my own models if I was a brand new beginner. But that is part of the hobby, and once I did mess with the program a little bit more, I reset, kind of took my time with it, I was able to start getting my own models off of it, and really the quality of them is pretty good. Now just like any 3D printer, you can increase and decrease the quality, that's totally fine on a printer like this. You can print in a high speed mode just to get the model out, or you can print in a more accurate precision mode. You can even swap the nozzles around on this, and the nozzle swap is fairly easy to do. You swap it from a 0.4 millimeter nozzle down to a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, and that just gives you more accuracy for the print. As for printing, it's really not that loud. Uh, you wouldn't hear it in the room next to you, but if it was sitting on a desk next to you and you were on something like a Zoom call, you would definitely hear it printing in the background. But that's kind of something that happens when you're trying to get into a faster 3D printer. As for the actual quality of the prints it was putting out, the pre-sliced models using their own filament really came out beautiful. Um, but usually that's kind of the case. They do their own testing with their own filaments. So sometimes that's gonna give you the best results, especially the preloaded stock files on the printer. Those all came out great. So I started swapping in some of my own filaments. I started throwing some silks on it. I actually did a filament change. It paused beautifully. It was totally fine with that. Um, everything was coming out really, really well. Ow, I just stabbed my finger so bad. Ooh, that is sharp. And then some of my own models that I started printing, especially on the high speed mode, this Onyx here took a little less than four hours, which is pretty good for a, uh, a larger model like this. The quality came out really good, even on that lower draft kind of high speed mode. I'm really impressed with it. As for the high detail little T-Rex skull, this thing came out great. I actually wanna put this on one of those little flexi Rexies and kind of give it like a cool mask. But uh, yeah, the detail on this is wonderful. The auto-generated supports on the models came off very, very easily. I had no problems removing any supports for any of the models that actually incorporated them. So the uh, Z offset and distance that's preloaded into the program and preloaded into the models that are on the app, wonderful. Being able to handle print in place objects like this is a very good test for the uh, tolerances and accuracy of a printer. All of the print in place stuff I have done, don't fall. 
stay. All the printed play stuff I've done thus far has printed beautifully. Even that axe that failed uh, before it had the weird failure, it was printing great. The, the, uh, the accuracy was coming out really nice and the model itself came out really cool too. I do want to reprint this, I just didn't get to it. Uh, a cool, you know, little swing out axe, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. So one of my final thoughts on this 3D printer, is it as user friendly as Anchor Make makes it out to be? Would I recommend it to a beginner or would I recommend it to an experienced user or would I not recommend it at all? So let's go back over everything real quick. It is easy to assemble, that's a pro. It is built beautifully, the quality is great. It is nice materials, that's a pro. And the app is wonderful. It makes you be able to start printing immediately without having to learn the slicing software and get frustrated with slicing your own models. You can literally click print and go and if you're buying it for a child or a first time user, this is, this is essential. However, I still do feel that a con is the fact that it doesn't have a screen and that just could be my bias to other 3D printers. I just like being able to see everything and having to have it hooked up to Wi-Fi in order to just get it to print. That is a little bit of a con for me. Having to use your phone, that's fair. I understand that you know technology and all that. Um, the slicing program does allow you to also send prints to the printer. So that is a little bit of a stopgap if you don't have the app. But if you, for, as far as I know to this point, if you don't have the app, you don't have access to that model library. So maybe there's a way to, they can incorporate that to the app where you can just drag and send models. But as of making this video, I do not see that capability. So Anchor, maybe, maybe add that. It'd be cool to just go on your computer, go through the model library, hit print, and you're off to the races. Now with all that said, and some trials and errors and some failures and frustrations, after really focusing on this printer and looking at it from the mind of a beginner, if this was my first printer, would I be happy with it? Survey says, yes. If this was my first experience 3D printing for $3.99, I would be very happy with this, especially if I was getting it for a child or a loved one or as my first printer. This is actually a pretty good experience and helps you get your feet wet. You wouldn't really miss the screen because as far as you know, that these things don't come with them unless you looked at other printers, which is fine. And would I recommend it to an experienced 3D printing enthusiast? Honestly, I have to say no there. Um, it just leaves a lot to be desired. And if you've used other printers, this might not be the thing that's gonna be like, oh my God, this is gonna be an upgrade from this other printer I've been using. There are other options out there, even like the M5, that isn't a bad experience, especially with the camera and the AI monitoring. And it is just a smidge bigger. But again, I don't know if this would be the one for somebody who already has a bunch of 3D printers. So if you're a beginner looking at this printer, not a bad choice. And if you're an experienced hobbyist, maybe keep looking somewhere else. If you are looking at the AnchorMake M5C as your first 3D printer, you will not be disappointed with this thing. It is going to work for you. It's gonna put out models and you're gonna be happy. As always guys, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything you saw or heard in the video, please leave them down below. I read all of them and I will do my best to respond to as many as possible. I do wanna say thank you to AnchorMake for sending me the AnchorMake M5C to review and properly test and make this review video and give my opinions on it. And if you like what you saw in the video or you liked how I broke stuff down or you just like looking at these awesome Iron Man suits, please consider subscribing to the channel. I put out videos all the time on tutorials and lessons and printer reviews and how to make pretty much everything in the background. It's pretty cool. But that's enough rambling. I'm gonna get out of here. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.